Well, good morning, everyone. I, uh, I was uh, standing backstage and looking at the time, and I noticed that I think this might be the first time that we have ever started an OpenStack Summit keynote day exactly on time. Um, it's also the first time we've done a summit in Germany. I don't know. <laughs> Correlation, maybe. Um, very, very excited to be here and uh, be having the summit in, in Berlin this week. Um, you know, the, the OpenStack community is truly a global community, and it's been two years since we've been in Europe. Um, you know, we had our summit in Barcelona in 2016, and so it's great to be here in Germany, and we have an incredible schedule this week. So many users that are speaking, um, a, an incredible program this morning, but throughout the week, a lot of users who are based here in Germany, who are in France, who are in Sweden, who are across Europe and really from around the world. And so that's the thing that I love about our events. You know, they're truly, truly global events. Um, for the last couple of events, one of the things that you probably have seen uh, you know, on signage and in our sessions that we've talked a lot about is open infrastructure. And you know, this is a, a concept that within the community and within the foundation, we've really been diving deep on, on open infrastructure. And I wanted to talk a little bit today about what that means and you know, really kind of think about what some of the opportunities we have are as we start to build out open infrastructure, both from a technology perspective and from a community perspective. So if we take open infrastructure, and we break it down. You know, it's got a couple of parts. The big one is open. Now, uh, if you've come to the OpenStack Summit, then I probably don't have to sell you on open source. Uh, within our community, you know, open source is one of our guiding principles. It's one of our core values, for sure. But this year, one of the things that we wanted to do was to, uh, to kind of look outside our bubble a little bit and see, you know, what is the impact that open source is having in the world at, at large and, and you know, across um, you know, the entire technology community. And so we commissioned some research uh, with a firm to, to do some focus groups, to do some surveys, and to try to get a pulse on you know, what do people out there think about open source in general. We found a lot of really, really interesting data. Um, we found a lot of data about how people are adopting it, how they're approaching it, and their attitudes towards it. But one of the stats that really stood out to me was that 81% of the respondents said that open source is becoming more important over the coming years for their company. And so this is, uh, I think, a, a, a great sign and a great stat for a community like ours that is really founded on and built on open source principles. We also asked, why is this? You know, why is open source important? Why is it something that you think is going to matter more and more for your organization? And there were a lot of responses that, uh, that, that we gathered around this, but there were a few that stood out. And one of the things that I found really interesting, you know, this was um, global research that we did across 10 countries and, uh, and from a very wide sample of organizations, but it actually matches up pretty closely to what we have found within our own user survey that we do um, within the OpenStack Foundation. One of the top priorities that organizations are looking um, to achieve with open source is to add flexibility and control into their environment. And a lot of companies feel like open source gives them flexibility, it gives them options, and that helps them have greater control over their business. And I think that, you know, that's, uh, that, again, makes a lot of sense probably for those of us who have been working in open source for a long time, because we know that's one of the great powers of open source, is you have the ability to take the software and you can run it in a lot of different ways that fit your business. With OpenStack, for instance, we have uh, many users who are running enterprise private clouds, and we're going to hear from some of them this morning. But we also have a lot of companies who are building public clouds with OpenStack. We have 75 public cloud data centers around the world that are, pub, um, that are running OpenStack and powered by OpenStack. And you know, that is uh, a, a really strong representation, a very, very strong footprint of public clouds. We're also going to hear from a couple of public cloud providers this morning, too, who talk about this. And so I think you know, that flexibility, those options, that is one of the most powerful things about open source. You can run it yourself. You can go get it as a service from a company like, uh, like Deutsche Telekom with their Open Telecom Cloud or OVH or Vexhost, three public cloud providers that are going to be speaking in a little while. 
Along those lines, another thing that, uh, that we heard was a, a really important attribute and a strength of open source was having true interoperability because, again, you have options within a marketplace, you have different vendors, you have different deployment uh, options, and ultimately, you have the freedom to run it yourself if you need to, and you want to support your workloads that way. So, um, you know, we, we heard a lot of comments from people who said that they felt like open source was a key to protecting them from vendor lock-in, a key to allowing them to work across multiple environments and in multiple geographies. One thing that we heard as an area for improvement within open source was uh, a, a desire to improve the integration and uh, the implementation models for open source technologies. I think that was something that about 75% of people said was an area that could be improved. And again, you know, for us in this community, we've been talking about that for, uh, for quite a while. Last year in Sydney, um, we talked about how one of our priorities at the OpenStack Foundation was going to be thinking more broadly than just the OpenStack software, but really thinking about um, an entire suite of open source technologies and how do you make them work together. And that is, I think, still, the data shows, uh, it's still a very critical goal and a very critical task for us to take on. One of the things, though, that I think is, is awesome, though, is when an organization is able to take open tools and integrate them successfully and build them, then it creates big, big opportunities for them. And one of the biggest ones is the ability to innovate faster. In some cases, the ability to innovate faster than the market. And that is when you get a competitive advantage. Um, I, I keep talking about you know, users that we're gonna hear from. We have so many awesome speakers. Uh, tomorrow, we're gonna be hearing from AT&T, and they're gonna be talking about how they have been doing this within their company. Um, specifically, they're gonna be talking about their 5G rollout. You know, 5G is the next generation of mobile technology, and AT&T is tackling this with an open source strategy. Not just OpenStack, but multiple projects that they're putting together. And one of the reasons why they're doing that with open source is because you know, they are rolling this out faster than the market is, is, uh, is answering um, you know, their needs with fully baked, uh, you know, fully um, uh, built commercial solutions. So they get to iterate faster than the market, and that gives them a big advantage as a business. So you know, open source is, is great, has a lot of advantages. But one of the things that, uh, that, that I, uh, I, I have been hearing and, and feeling is, you know, open source is only one part of the equation. Mark talked about this in Vancouver six months ago. He said, open source is required, but it's not enough. And that's why we've been talking about open infrastructure. Because infrastructure is really a key component of, of the way the world works today. You know, what is infrastructure really? Well, infrastructure is the environment that software, that applications run on. And you know, there's been infrastructure as long as there's been computing. Um, as long as there's been software, there's been you know, processors, there have been storage devices. Uh, for all of the modern history of computing, there's been networking. And so you know, that's, a, that's, that's not a new concept. But at the same time, in the last few years, we've seen a lot of things that have been changing, especially the needs of those applications. And those needs are driving requirements down into the infrastructure as well. I talked about AT&T. If you look at what a communications company um, does these days, it's not just about phone calls and text messages. It's about massive amounts of data, massive amounts of video, massive numbers of connected devices, connected cars, um, smart homes, smart cities. We now have far more data being produced by devices and systems than by humans. And that creates an entirely different type of, uh, of, of network requirement, an entirely different type of storage requirement, and new kinds of computing requirements. You look to the, uh, the challenges that we faced as, uh, as humanity, and we want to solve those, and we solve those through computing now. Um, our most recent super user winner in Vancouver was the Ontario Cancer Research Institute. And they are tackling the problem of, <clears throat> of cancer and finding a cure for cancer and doing that through infrastructure. So as the needs have changed, infrastructure has also changed. Infrastructure is now software-defined. 
And that is a, a huge advance in terms of what you're able to do. And we get to see new patterns emerging where people take infrastructure that is uh, programmable. On top of that, they deploy cloud-native frameworks, and they run next-gen applications like AI and machine learning. But as we look at this, you know, we are, are in a world where there are many, many options, and some of those are open, and some of those are proprietary. And this is what I think you know, we are all here to work on, and uh, the goal and the challenge that we have is we want to make sure that the infrastructure world has very, very, very successful, very, very powerful open options. So that when you go back and you think about a stack like this, you have open options at every level. Because if you don't have open technologies at the infrastructure level, then you lose some of those benefits that we talked about before. Even if you're using open source tools, open source databases, if ultimately you don't have that flexibility, if you don't have the ability to change what your infrastructure is doing when you need to innovate, like AT&T, then you are losing the benefits of open source um, that you would have if you have that throughout the stack. So open infrastructure is definitely a theme for us, something that, uh, that you're going to see uh, repeatedly through the week. Now, um, you're here, and, uh, and uh, no one here, I think, at the OpenStack Summit is here just for OpenStack. If you look at the schedule, you'll see there are dozens and dozens of different projects um, that are presented here, that are talked about, that are collaborated on here. It's one of the things that I really, really enjoy about our events. Um, you know, we love bringing communities together to collaborate. And so along those lines, one of the things that we're doing going forward is this event will now be called the Open Infrastructure Summit. And that is to reflect that, that strategy and that goal that we have to build powerful infrastructure um, that's open, that's integrated, and that people can use to really drive change within their organizations. But you know, the, just to be clear, we are not running away from OpenStack, you know, because for us, open infrastructure starts with OpenStack. And so as we get today started, one of the things that we're going to be doing is we're going to be talking about OpenStack a lot today, and we're going to be talking about how it has been um, changing and growing and what people are using it for. Just to give you a couple of more pieces of data before I wrap up, um, when you look at just the OpenStack project, it still has an incredible rate of change. In the last year, OpenStack has had about 70,000 changes that have made it into the software. That is um, at, at a level that, that really there are only about three projects out there, OpenStack, Linux, and Chromium, that have that level of change in the open source world right now. If you look at the rocky cycle and you break that down, just to give you an idea of the velocity, that's 182 changes every single day. And that includes weekends and holidays. So um, how many of you here contributed to the rocky release? Can I see a show of hands? Yes. Well, thank you. I want to give you all a round of applause. Yeah, I mean, this is, this is a, a, a level of, of, uh, of, of development activity that really is, is at the top in the world. And so thank you to everyone who contributed. A little later today, we're going to hear from, uh, from some of the, the leaders in the technical community to talk to us about what's new in Rocky and, uh, and give us a little, bit of, uh, a little bit deeper information on the technical side. Um, so, you know, you, you look at that and you're like, man, that is a lot of activity still. And you look across the world overall, and we see a lot of things happening in open source, a lot of new technologies that are driving interesting changes out there, things like containers and edge and AI. And you might go, okay, so are these happening on different tracks? You know, is there this container and AI track, and then over here you have OpenStack and it's doing VMs and data centers, and, uh, and you know, what, what's the connection? But I think the connection comes when you think back to those needs that I talked about a minute ago. Because AI is driving infrastructure requirements. Where's the best place to run AI? Well, it's the best place to run AI is in accelerated hardware. How do you manage that hardware at scale? How do you bring GPUs and FPGAs into your cloud? How do you manage thousands of them? How do you manage tens of thousands of them? How do you take automated infrastructure and deploy it out to the edge for a telco use case or a manufacturing use case? You know, these are all changes 
that the application layer is requiring of the infrastructure. And uh, what's great about software-defined infrastructure, like OpenStack, is that it is able to evolve and it's able to meet these needs. And so as we get today started, that's gonna be our theme for the morning, is how open infrastructure starts with OpenStack. And to kick things off, we're gonna hear what I think is a really, really interesting use case 